Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Wenzel, and I'm going to be showing you my system for a lower molar crown prep using the Global A6 microscope. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. While mandibular molar preps under the microscope are more challenging than their maxillary counterparts, with a good system and some practice, you'll be tackling these in no time. I like to start my occlusal reduction with direct vision at about an 11 o'clock operator position, with the patient seated up at about 30 degrees. A 9 o'clock position can also work and comes in handy for buckle reduction later. I use a modified rubber dam for macro retraction of the tongue and cheeks. I punch a hole in the shape of a four leaf clover which then stretches over three teeth with the prep tooth in the middle. The clover shape maintains your access to the buccal and lingual margins while still keeping the tongue and cheek out of your way. This makes learning the microscope far easier. You'll notice we have fantastic access for our occlusal reduction and functional cusp bevel reduction. We want to complete as much work as possible before we move the scope as to maximize our efficiency. With just one hand and my nose as a fulcrum, I can move the scope easily into position for our lingual bevel reduction. This is where the global scope shines. I own multiple brands of scopes and my global performs the best in this regard by far. Now I shift the scope into position for optimal indirect vision. The body of the scope should be perpendicular to the floor or even with the bottom of the scope tilted slightly back towards you, as seen in this photo. This creates more space for your mirror while increasing the distance between the mirror and the tooth, which reduces splatter on the mirror. Having the patient parallel to the floor improves access even further. One aspect of microscope dentistry that will immediately impress you when you start is the utter lack of shadows. Unlike loops and a headlight, scopes offer virtually perfect coaxial lighting. In my opinion, this is even more wonderful than the high magnification a scope provides. For our buccal reduction, having the patient seated up at 30 degrees, operating between 9 and 11 o'clock, and tilting the bottom of the scope slightly away from you gives ideal access and visualization. After becoming experienced with the scope, I found prepping teeth for crowns to almost become a meditative experience. I know it sounds strange, but when you look through those oculars, everything but the tooth falls away from your visual field. I've heard it said that work is only work when you'd rather be doing something else. For me, restoring teeth through the scope truly does feel like play. As you can see, we receive immediate and crystal clear visual feedback on the quality and quantity of marginal reduction. This is so nice because we have to never hope that our margins are going to be clear on the impression or the scan later. We can confirm that immediately as we prep each segment of the tooth. For lingual reduction, I ask my patient to turn their head to the right, and I may even tilt the bottom of the scope slightly in the same direction. This gives us ideal access. If you're just starting with the microscope, it's wise to begin your journey with maxillary teeth, as they are far simpler to prep. In a moment, we'll be shifting to indirect vision to connect our margins, and typically dentists aren't as comfortable with a mirror on the lower arch as they are on the maxillary. Eventually, however, it does become second nature as you use the scope more and more. Again, a horizontal patient and the bottom of the scope tilted slightly back towards you gives you an ideal view. Please expect using the microscope to feel unnatural at first. It's a whole new way of practicing, and it will take time to master using it. The very fact that you're watching this video and trying to learn is going to give you a massive head start. We can also use a microsurgeon stool with armrests to support the gross motor joints. You may find this helps with your precision when working at higher magnifications. Now, towards the end, we use the scope to identify and correct any minor deficiencies. Once proficient with the scope, lab techs really do start to notice the difference in your preps. This really comes down to having the visual acuity to spot imperfections as they occur or during refinement, as opposed to finding them on the scan later. Obviously perfection is never truly attainable, however, what you will find is that proficiency with the scope does make consistent excellence far easier. 
Now, when I take a scan, I look forward to seeing it as I know beforehand that I'm going to have a nice prep on that screen. For me, the microscope has made work feel a whole lot more like play. I can document my cases with ease, see everything perfectly clearly, and catch imperfections as they happen, all while sitting in ergonomic bliss. I look forward to seeing what you can do with it too. Let's keep in touch. You can find me on my YouTube channel, Michael the Dentist, where I regularly post more microscope content. Just look at that shadow free lighting. Even the trough between the margin and the gingiva is lit up. As you can see, our scan is simply a low res version of what we saw through the scope. If our prep looks good under the scope, there won't be any surprises on the scan.